Hi guys, the unbelievable has happened. We have a beautiful day here in the end times in Babylon. The blizzards and hailstorms have broken here in Paonia, Colorado on Wednesday, May 27th, 2015. Starting to look a little bit like springtime after Memorial Day, hallelujah. And so Wednesday is when I bring you my annual my annual, yeah, right, my weekly climate change meltdown roundup rant where I just go on the pages of the mainstream media just to see how this planet is, it, 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 it's just going crazy. It's, it's the, the planet has gone insane. You know, I, as much as, as miserable as I am here in Paonia, Colorado, my God, look at Austin, Texas, where uh, I just left this week. How many people are dead uh, in Texas as this biblical flood fixes the, uh, the drought? That, that's the new normal, the way to fix a biblical drought on planet Earth from here on out is with the biblical flood. You know, that's kind of your choice, guys. Drought or flood? Blizzard or heat stroke? And speaking of heat stroke, you know, I'm trying not to see too much humor in this coming out of India, barely getting any mention in the mainstream media. Um, India heat wave kills 800 as capital's roads melt. So the roads are melting in India as this planet eating little little shit bag, this uh, Modi guy, I'm going to name this this guy the, uh, the world's newest biggest planet eater. The guy is completely out of control and uh, I, I was going to, I'm going to make a whole separate rant about this other, other article out of India. If, if any country on this planet deserves to have 800 people frying in, in their houses uh, as the asphalt roads melt, it would be India, which this is by all the doomsday forecast, India, 10 years from now, if not five years from now, will be the world's biggest greenhouse gas emitter. It will pass China sometime in the next five to 10 years. But this week, in preparation for what's coming down the pike, at least 800 people have died in a major heat wave that has swept across India, melting roads in New Delhi as temperatures went to 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, hospitals were on alert to treat victims of heat stroke and authorities advised people to stay indoors with no end in sight to the searing conditions. No end in sight. So this was uh, yesterday, this story, so I don't know how many probably uh, dead since then. Uh, hundreds of people, mainly from the poorest sections of society, die at the height of summer every year across the country while tens of thousands suffer power cuts from an overburdened electricity grid. So as more and more of these people in India, uh, as it becomes the most populated country on the planet, getting out of poverty, the first thing they're going to do is buy an air conditioner. Well, do, do, do you follow the karma, you know, while hundreds or thousands of people are dropping dead from climate change. What do we have? Uh, we, we have this little planet-eating piece of shit, Modi, doing everything he can to become the planet's biggest greenhouse gas emitter. Gee, it's called Mother Nature bringing out her broom. It is called karma. And as long as we're talking about karma, I love this story. Forest fire forces 10% cut in Canada's oil sands output. G. 
Now, is that karma? So we've got climate change ramping up all of these forest fires all over the planet, and then the forest fires reducing the output of the greenhouse gases from the tar sands. You absolutely have to love this. Um, bring it on. Bring on the forest fires. You know, uh, Mother Nature will recover from a forest fire. Two oil companies announced Monday the temporary shuttering of their Canadian oil sands mines and the evacuation of hundreds of staff as a massive forest fire crept closer. All right. So 10% of the oil sands shit. But of course, this is only temporary. Only temporary. So these 1,800 workers from ConocoPhillips won't be out of a job for long, but it won't be long before they're out of a job for good, which may or may not have something. Well, before I get into that, before we get into the business and politics of climate change, let's just go down there for the latest story from Antarctica, from Live Science. Antarctica's ice attacked from above and below. One of the fastest warming places on the planet, the Antarctic Peninsula, has lost two massive ice shelves in the past 20 years, the Larsen A and the Larsen B. Each disappeared within a matter of weeks. Good Lord, no one knows for sure, for sure why the ice shelves collapsed, but now a new study finds the remaining Larsen C ice shelf is melting from more than just toasty air. The ice shelf is also disappearing due to warming in the oceans. So, you know, the ice shelves getting it from above and below. But, uh, Thank God we have that, that record sea ice formation. There is a difference between ice shelf and sea ice. I've tried to explain it the past several weeks, but if you, if you don't understand it now, then uh, go on thinking that sea ice, record sea ice in the water around the land mass, the melting land mass, is proof that climate change is a hoax. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, no romp around a collapsing planet would be complete without a uh, trip to sub-Saharan Africa. There were, there were actually a bunch of climate change articles from sub-Saharan Africa. This one's as good as any. Zimbabweans go hungry as drought hammers southern Africa. There you go. Even in the best of times, life is harsh in Sayagajima, a desolate village in southwest Zimbabwe. And after the worst regional drought in nearly a decade and the failure of nearby crops, it is likely to become even harsher. You know, for 31-year-old Mejuri Tarari, whose corn and cotton crops have been decimated, that means feeding her children nothing but scarce corn and ground nuts. It doesn't say how many children this Zimbabwean mother has. Uh, she is now feeding her kids ground nuts, whatever they are. Uh, guys, Mother Nature bringing out her broom 
as famine uh, ramping up all over sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, but don't get me into a sub-Saharan Africa rant, which is, is never far away from uh, any collapse of the planet rant, no matter what the subject. Climate change, to overpopulation, to oil wars, to the sixth mass extinction. If you want to see the future of planet Earth, go to sub-Saharan Africa. Good God, as I say, I could have gone pretty much anywhere. Um, but anyway, we're going to turn from uh, how all of this is playing out on the planet to what exactly the human race is going to do about it. And this one, you know, I admit, guys, it, this, this whole part of the uh, story is uh, climate change story is the one that I, I don't quite know how to dig to the bottom of. I'm just going to read it straight from the mainstream media and uh, you help me out here. Investment fund CEOs call for long-term greenhouse gas cuts. Some of the world's biggest investment funds urged the group of seven industrialized nations on Tuesday to commit to a long-term goal to cut world greenhouse gas emissions as part of this unadulterated horseshit UN climate deal in December. Uh, cuts in emissions would give investors more certainty. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be. Quote, we believe climate change is one of the biggest systemic risks we face, close quote. Uh, the fund managers who oversee more than 12 trillion, with a T, dollars in assets said in an open letter to the G7 finance ministers. The letter was signed by 120 CEOs of investment funds. Uh, we, we will see where, uh, where, where this is going to go. Uh, Anyway, so this is one of these guys, quote, the world needs $53 trillion, $53 trillion of energy investment by 2035. This is, this is 20 years. We're supposed to come up with $53 trillion to avoid dangerous climate change, a low carbon future is an imperative. Yep, uh, okay. It is an imperative. Yes, and which gets me over to what is our, the, what is Christina Figueres, the executive, executive secretary of the UN's Convention on Climate Change. <coughs> what is my old sweetheart buddy Christina up to this week? You take it away. I'm sorry, Christiana. I keep mispronouncing her name. Christiana Figueres. All right, take it away, Christiana. Responding to climate change in the next 15 years is the world's quote, mega development project, close quote, given the need to invest trillions of dollars in infrastructure, job creation, and economic stability. Um, she was saying yesterday, uh, it makes fundamental economic sense for countries to push forward on tackling climate change because of the benefits that will bring in terms of food, water, energy, and employment. Uh, Christiana told a carbon market conference in Barcelona. Yep. 
she is now calling, quote, a decarbonized world is now irreversible and irrefutable. We are going to do it because, frankly, we don't have any other option. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. Well, I mean, it's, it's true that we don't have any other option. That part is true. Uh, but, but if Christi Christiana or, or these 120 CEOs think that we are going to have a decarbonized planet in the next 20 years, uh, yes, I got some oceanfront property on Mars to sell them. Decarbonization refers to shifting from fossil fuels to renewable energy sources, blah, blah, blah. Uh, okay, and so how does the World Bank weighing in on, uh, in on this bullshit? This is Rachel Kite, the World Bank's envoy for climate change said to decarbonize economies, quote, we will need to begin with extraordinary ambition at the end of this year. So we don't need to do anything but now, between now and the end of this year. Uh, she's talking about uh, this, this extraordinary ambition in, 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 in Paris. Anybody thinking, no matter how the dog and pony show plays out in Paris at the end of 2015, is going to do a goddamn thing to save this planet? Got one thing to tell you, World Bank, UN, and all the rest of you dreamers. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Experts say the national plans countries are now compiling for that deal are unlikely, unlikely, to add up to the reductions in greenhouse gas emissions needed to keep global warming to an internationally agreed limit of two degrees Celsius. How many times? I'm not even going to waste the, the batteries in my bullshit but uh, on, on that, on this whole goddamn joke of this uh, two degree limit, uh, you know. Anyway, uh, I love this. I love this uh, quote. From, from this one, one more quote from Christiana. We are currently in an era of transition, a construction site, if you will. By definition, transitions and construction sites are messy. And that is a good thing because everybody is trying to figure out how to move forward. And I love the total number of comments on this story on planet Earth. That would be exactly zero comments on the, on the story. World has no choice but to decarbonize. But don't worry, guys. Right next to that story, as long as we're looking ahead to Paris. Here we have Reuters news. Governments certain to seal Paris climate deal, according to uh, this dream of Christiana. Okay, take it away again, Christiana. Governments are certain to sign a global climate deal in Paris in six months' time, even though most countries have yet to outline how they plan to cut emissions. 
There you go. This is again, let's go back to Christiana. As long as she's, uh, again, I don't know what the hell this woman is smoking. Quote, Governments are actually very well on track. There is no doubt that this agreement will be forged in Paris. Uh, well, guys, you know, whether or not anything is signed in Paris, it doesn't make a goddamn difference. Uh, Figueres' comment came just a week after French President Francois Holland said he was worried about a lack of progress toward a climate deal. So far, just 37 of 196 UN member states have submitted plans to the UN outlining their actions to slow global warming beyond 2020. And of course, uh, quickly becoming number one on that agenda is India. The same India uh, melting this week as hundreds if not thousands of Indians dying in heat stroke and the pavement melting, uh, you can be sure that India's plan to attack climate change uh, is going to be the biggest joke of them all. But while I was going through these stories, I, the, the story out of India deserves its own separate rantlet. So I'm going to wrap up this week's climate change meltdown roundup rant and come back to you uh, with, this, with this story in a minute for this rant. Bye, guys.